Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, January 13th, 2010. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. For this week, home brewer Adam Drager shares his blueberry wheat beer experiment with us. I call in a panel of local experts to compare and contrast blueberry extract against the real thing. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. You can find me on Twitter. I'm Basic Brewing, all one word. On Facebook, I'm facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. And our show page on Facebook is facebook.com slash basicbrewing. Thanks again to everybody clicking on the amazon.com associate link on our basicbrewing.com site. Whenever you think of Amazon, think of us and click on our associate link first. It won't cost you any extra, and you'll be helping us to bring you the show, and we appreciate your support. Also, remember our associate links for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Homebrewers Association on our site, too. And you can find our basic brewing iPhone and Android podcast apps on their respective stores, and you can find us on the BlackBerry podcast directory, too. We have data uh, we have received data forms from five brewers so far who are participating in our sixth BYO BBR collaborative experiment. I say so far because even though the official deadline was this past weekend, the form is still online at basicbrewing.com experiment. Uh, Chris Colby and I are looking at the data this week and will record on Monday. So if you have data to share and haven't sent it in yet, you can still do so. I think five is a great number of participants for this, uh, for this experiment. I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm, we asked you to brew multiple batches of beer and compare those mashing and loudering techniques, not just divide the product of one brewing session. So that takes extra work. Uh, so uh, I, I'm happy that, that you guys participated, and I appreciate uh, all of your uh, time and trouble. And I hope that, uh, hope that all the batches of beer were good so that you'll have them on hand to drink. I'm looking forward to uh, comparing the results with Chris next week. So be sure and tune back in for that. Very interesting. Uh, I got a couple of notes through email telling me that the wheels are turning in Mississippi again this legislative session to try to raise the uh, ABV cap on commercial beers and legalize home brewing. Best of luck to you guys down there. hope you'll be uh, be able to uh, make more headway this year. Got good news from Joe in Watertown, uh, Connecticut. Joe says, My son returned from his second tour of duty in Afghanistan back in November. While he was away, I wanted to do something special for him. He's always enjoyed my beers, so I saved a six-pack from every batch I made while he was away. Uh, Joe says, I don't brew all that often, but it was still over two cases and a wonderful variety pack for him to come home to. There was a colonial-style porter, a pumpkin ale, English mild, spiced barley wine, dry mead, sweet mead, and a bunch of others. Uh, Joe says, I was happy to do it, and it was great to see the look he had when I showed him what I had for them. Welcome uh, welcome home to your son, uh, Joe. That is uh, that's a, really a, a great way to show some support and some love for your son. Uh, and a great surprise, I'm sure. This comes from Darnell. Uh, Darnell says, I have just started listening to your podcasts and I'm working my way through your archives. From your podcast, I learned about Brew in a Bag and I tried it out last Sunday. I also tried preheating my grains by putting my grains in two large glass jars and submerging them in my pot while I brought the water to temperature. The idea being the grains would slowly warm up and I would only need to set my water temp to maybe a few degrees over my target strike temperature. It seemed to work. The grains only dropped the water temp by maybe two degrees. Can you think of any reason not to do this? That's an interesting idea. Uh, I can't think of a reason not to do it offhand, assuming that the grain doesn't get hot enough to denature any enzymes while it's submerged in the water there. I don't know if you're saving any time, though, because I believe that you'd be using the same amount of energy to bring the grains and water up to the temperature at the same time. Uh, I think that you're using the same amount of time and energy as you would by bringing the water to a higher temperature and then adding the colder grains to the strike water, because you'd end up with a mash at the same temperature 
in both instances, in the same volume of grain and water in both cases. So I believe you'd be using the same amount of time and fuel, uh, but I don't know. I'd love to hear uh, hear the results of a side-by-side test to see if I'm right on that. Uh, and if, you, if there are any uh, physics professors out there uh, <laughs> who want to weigh in on that, uh, I would be glad to hear uh, from you as well. So does submerging the grains in the glass jars and heating heating the grain up as the water heats up, does it, is it, does it give you any advantage? Uh, Giancarlo in the Philippines writes this, says, I have a friend who is going to start brewing and says that he will not start with extract. He says that he will jump straight to all grain and malt his own barley. And then he will make a basic hopless beer... And then he will try to plant hops here for hops in his beer. Do you think, as I do, that he is stupid? (laughs) Also, should I try to convince him to start with extract? I don't know if I'd say stupid, but it's certainly ambitious to start brewing by malting your own barley and then brewing a hopless beer while you wait for your own hops to grow. Uh I don't know. If he's a tenacious guy, he may succeed. You know, if he's bullheaded and, and, and wants to succeed what no matter what, he may succeed. However, there are a lot of hurdles in that process. And if he fails at any part during that process, he may get discouraged and not make it all the way to the fermenter and then the glass. So I would advise parallel paths, taking two paths at once. While, while he's learning how to malt, his own grain and grow his own hops, he can also brew some extract patches. <laughs> that way, he can learn all about the boiling process, the chilling process, and the fermentation and packaging and so on, so that when he's perfected his home malting technique and he's got his homegrown hops in his hand, he can hit the ground running. So do both at the same time. Stupid? I don't know. Ambitious? Definitely. Let me, let me know what he does. Uh, a little while back, I got an email from Adam Drager offering to send me some beers. He'd done an experiment comparing blueberry extract and real blueberries in a wheat beer and thought I'd be interested. He wasn't pitching a show idea. He was just going to send the beers as a kind of thank you for the podcast. But ever in search for content, I suggested that we call in some others to evaluate the results of his experiment. And, and I invited Adam on the show to talk about his process. Well, Adam Drager, welcome to Basic Brewing Radio. Oh, thanks for having me, James. You're up there in Pella, Iowa, where That's it's, correct. it's cold and snowing. Yeah, we're getting about 4 to 12 inches of snow tonight. Wow. That's a, we, we got a dusting yesterday and it almost shut down the uh, schools. So <laughs> a little different perspective here in northwest Arkansas. Uh, but we're not here to talk about snow. We're here to talk about beer. Uh, you uh, how, uh, Give us some background on, on yourself. Uh, how long have you been a brewer and what do you like to brew and such as that? Well, I'm living in Iowa now, but I, I grew up in the beer state of Wisconsin. And uh, th- come this summer, it will be uh, 10 years of brewing for me and uh, over 100 batches. Wow. Well, there you go. Uh, so you you've, this, isn't, <clears throat> this isn't your first rodeo then. This little experiment. No. <laughs> no. I, I, I try to brew different batches every time, too, just experiment. I, I think I've maybe only repeated a recipe once or twice. Uh, it's usually, it's not always to uh, BJCP guidelines, but I, I try to uh, try lots of different things because it's just a good self-education. Well, there you go. You're, you're, you're talking my language. We're on the same page, I think. Uh, your experiment has to do with, with fruit beers, Tell us uh, your experience with with brewing with fruit. Um, I have done a lot of fruit. I guess my the, the batch I made for my uh, wedding party was a uh, raspberry wheat that I added uh, raspberry extract to. Um, I've done a pumpkin. I've done uh, a watermelon. That that didn't turn out so good. Um, <laughs> I've uh, I had a pretty successful. Uh, I tried to clone a uh, new Glarus's. Uh, cherry uh, cherry beer, mm-hmm. and I used uh, some just tart uh, cranberry uh, uh, 
just tart cherry juice uh, in there. It was quite a bit. It was an entire gallon of cherry juice, pure cherry, cherry juice for four gallons of beer. <laughs> uh, but it, it was pretty tasty. You, you get, definitely got a lot of cherry flavor in that one. Well, you, you know, you, you set the bar high when comparing yourself against the New Glarus uh, beer. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good beer, and I think it's pretty tough to make. <laughs> well, uh, tell us about this experiment. You wanted to do uh, a side-by-side comparison with blueberry. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to do a side-by-side comparison with lots of things. I, this summer, I was just in the, had the hankering for some wheat beer, so I thought if I'm going to brew a bunch of wheat, I'll buy a whole bag of wheat malt instead of buying it by, by the batch. So I bought an entire 55-pound uh, bag of wheat malt and decided to uh, do uh, several different exper- uh, experiments. The first one was that watermelon where I, uh, I tried to mash the, the, the chunks of watermelon, but it was so cold that I, I had a hard time keeping my, my mash up to temperature. Uh-huh. And then I tried a, a pair of cinnamon beers side by side. I, I put real cinnamon in the one, and I put uh, red hot hot hearts oh. in the other one for a side by side. And you know what? Both of those turned out great, but very, very different. Huh. I, I, somebody was like, well, which one would you brew again? And I said, I'd probably brew them both again, uh, but under different circumstances. So, and, so well, let's talk about this a little bit. I want to, you know, I want to get all the information I can out of you. Well, I get you. <laughs> okay. We can't skip over that. Okay. So, so tell us about that brew session. I mean, uh, how much cinnamon and how, how much of the candy did you use? I put a lot. Eight grams of cinnamon doesn't sound like a lot. It was ground cinnamon, but when you when you weigh eight grams of cinnamon, it, it's it's a heaping pile. <laughs> it was a pretty big heaping pile, and then the hot hearts came in an eight point five ounce bag. I don't know why it's more than a half a pound, but I put the the entire half a pound, a little bit plus bag of those hot hearts, and uh, both to the secondary, and um, the some of the the cinnamon made it all the way into. Uh, into the keg, so that you sometimes you'd get a, a flake or two of a uh, of cinnamon, huh? Out of the keg. So uh, you so you added both of those ingredients in the secondary. Yeah, I split the batch, so it's the same same primary, and I split the batch. Uh, the hot hearts turn the the beer pink, not red, but but like bright hot pink. And uh, again, they both tasted good. I think the the cinnamon. One tasted more like a, um, a Cinnabon because huh. you could taste the yeast, you could taste the wheat, and then you could taste the cinnamon. It tastes like a Cinnabon. Whereas the Hot Heart one was just like a wheat beer with just a little hint of candy to it. Um, it, it, it wasn't that hot. I want to do that one again, but I think I'm going to go for a full two pounds of Hot Hearts because it, <laughs> it, it, it barely affected it. It, huh. it barely affected it. And I was trying to go for over the over the top, and something that was like super exciting. So, d- did the uh, did the candy dissolve by itself in the secondary? Yeah, yeah I, I, I I don't I think I slowly stirred it a little bit just to get some movement in there. But yeah, it it the beer the, I don't know if it's the pH of the beer or, or alcohol or what, but it it slowly dissolved. It, it took away the hot hearts are actually just red on the outside and they're white on the inside. And so it took completely, it took away the red layer. And I, when I was done though, it, it didn't, I don't think it completely dissolved them. If I remember right, there was still little white hard, uh, beads, hmm. uh, when I, when I dumped my fermenter. So what, did you see uh, fermentation kick up at all when, uh, with the added sugar from those, uh, after you put I, it in I, the secondary? Yeah, I thought about that. Um, I, I was actually was pretty certain because it's it's sugar. I was pretty certain it was going to uh, ferment a little little bit lower uh, to a lower gravity, and, and they were the same. Huh. They, they didn't. Uh, they weren't any different. Huh. Okay. And then and then there was no uh, spice bag or anything with the the cinnamon. Just just uh, added in the secondary. Yeah, I just threw it in there. I, I guess if people are worried about that, they could filter it back out or or put it in a bag. But I I, I wanted it to get maximized uh, spice uh, infusion. Well, very cool. Well, it, it, go on down the list then. Right? <laughs> Pausing at the cinnamon. 
<laughs> so after the cinnamon, then I, I wanted to do a I, – I actually had a bottle of the, the, the blueberry extract, the four-ounce bottle that you get at pretty much every homebrew supply shop. And I, I've had that for like maybe a year and a half. I'm just kind of sitting on it. I thought, I, I got to use that up. So I was just going to brew just a batch of that. And I remembered that we had a bunch of frozen blueberries that we were going to make pie or do something with. And I asked my wife if I could have those, and there was eight pounds of them. And I decided just to put all eight pounds in the other, the other <laughs> five gallons. <laughs> so, so four ounces of uh, raspberry or blueberry extract. Now, this is the stuff that doesn't have any fermentable sugar, so you could add it in the keg or in the bottle uh, safely. Yeah. That's correct, and there's 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 no coloring in that either. It's it was, I think, well maybe it was slightly colored, but it, it didn't affect the color of the beer. And then the then eight pounds of the frozen uh, blueberries. Yeah, they were fresh. I think they're from a farmer's market. They were they were fresh blueberries that we uh, we froze to cut, break open the break open the cells, mm-hmm. and then uh, that's it was just that fresh frozen. Now, how did the, how did the berries act after you? Put them in the secondary. Well, eight pounds. If you've ever seen eight pounds uh, of blueberries in the bottom of a fermenter, I put the, the, the blueberries in first, and it, it came up to the gallon and a half mark <laughs> just by themselves. <laughs> and so when I put the beer on, on, on top, it completely filled, and the blueberries floated up, and all the beer wasn't – if you made a really dry hopped – beer with lots of whole leaf hops you'll see the same thing they just float to the top and you don't feel like it's gonna the beer is actually touching it and the same thing happened with with the blueberries they all just floated to the top and they pushed on top of each other like a big iceberg (laughs) and again did you did you see the additional fermentation after you put those in Uh, um wasn't paying too close attention but it, it did finish at about two points uh Lower than the uh, than the other beer. Okay. So I, I know it did ferment just a little bit. Well, very good. Now what? Now what? You sent uh, a pair of each of these beers: the extract beer and the the blueberry beer, uh, and you just labeled them one and two. Uh, and then, w- so what I did was uh, I went over to Andy Sparks's house and enlisted Andy uh, of thehomebrewery dot com. Uh, along with uh, uh, our friends Casey and Jen, uh, to uh, give a taste to these beers. I I told them nothing going into it. I said, I'm just going to give you two beers that you're going to taste side by side, compare and contrast. And, uh, well, we recorded the proceedings, and here's how that went. Okay, here we are in Andy's secret back room here, (laughs) conducting an experiment uh, Andy Sparks, welcome to the tasting. Oh, thanks for having me once again, James. And uh, Casey Lohman. Hey, thanks for having me. It's been too long since y'all have been on the show. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time since uh, Maple Sap Brew Day, probably. Has it? Yeah. Holy smokes. That was a really good beer. Yeah, and hey, Jen, we still have some. Jen Royer is here as well. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have poured you two uh, samples of beers. And I've told you nothing about them, and you are sampling number one and number two uh, next to each other. And you, your task is to uh, observe, to compare, and contrast. Hmm. Okay. So. Well, okay, number one is a straw golden color. Number two is kind of a pinkish reddish color so that's first contrast right there totally different color yeah yeah that's we picked that up right away um to me the first one uh i don't know it's like to me i got an apricot smell and an apricot uh taste it almost reminds me of magic cat number nine mm-hmm. but I, I usually find the odd tasting so <laughs> we'll see what anybody else says <laughs> Andy's got his nose buried in the cup here. Yeah, there's. I I feel like there's something in this beer. Like I want to say spruce. I don't think it's spruce, but there's something pungent that's really kind of not normal for beers. <laughs> okay. 
Um, to me, number one. First of all, let me say both of these beers are super carbonated. They're highly carbonated. But number one, I don't get a whole lot of smell. I mean, it doesn't have anything that really knocks you over with the smell. And I, the main, the first smell I thought was chapstick. I don't know. <laughs> kind of a waxy smell. It does have something herbal in there. I don't know. Maybe ginger? What it is. Maybe ginger? I don't know. Okay. It's, it's got kind of a... Oh, now I'm tasting it. I'm not smelling it anymore. Um, Lemon? Hmm. It's very effervescent, but it finishes almost with a little little bitterness. You know, it starts with that kind of almost like a ginger kind of flavor and then a kind of a little shot of abrupt bitterness there at the end. Okay. Very subtle, whatever it is. Very subtle. Okay. Now, now the second one is is kind of a reddish mm, hue. Reddish pink. Uh, definitely different from the first one. Which is a, as I think Jen, you said, a straw color. Uh, so that's that's a marked difference there in the color. Let's see if they're different, markedly different in the other characteristics. This one to me has a little bit more of a tartness to it. Um, more like, as in the first one I tasted apricot, and to me more it's like a little bit more acidity than that. It's like cranberry or something like that. In my initial feeling of it you know it could be raspberry it's got some berry in it obviously it's red you know but uh, it it does seem similar to the first beer in the sense that i still get kind of the character of the first beer i agree with that yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if these are similar in some way yeah maybe this one is the same beer but they added some fruit flavor or juice maybe fruit juice to it this one I like better, actually, because the, the little sweetness of the fruit uh, kind of cuts what I was talking about, about that bitterness at the end, and this seems a little more refreshing. Um, just my opinion, but I like it better, I think. So they're they're both tasty beers, would you say? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like them both. I do. I like them both, and, and they seem fruity to me in two different ways. Where and, and Andy said the sweetness of the second beer, but um, to me, uh, the first one's sweeter, and then the second one seems drier to me. I, I don't know if that's a weird statement or not. Hmm. It may be the 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 fact that it's got the fruit flavor in it, you know, or the fruitiness kind of plays up the sweetness, and it makes you think sweet. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, there'll be wines that are fairly dry but still taste sweet or you know because of the fruit you know in it but uh i like the i like the red one better it's like a perceived sweetness right exactly. uh, it's more like you know the sugar's eaten but it, it tastes sweet right. because of the characters of it more so <laughs> yeah i mean um but as far as like my normal first reaction the first one's sweeter to me and the second one's dry with a little bit of acidity of maybe it's whatever fruit is in that one i don't know well, shall we? Uh, <clears throat> shall I reveal? Tell us. <laughs> reveal how off I am. No, you guys are actually, uh, and I told you nothing uh, about the beer at all. They are both. Uh, they both have. Uh, they are both wheat beers as a base. One, and I don't know which one, but I could guess. <laughs> <laughs> One uh, has had four, uh, in both five-gallon batches, one has had four ounces of blueberry extract. Blueberry. The other has, has had eight pounds of fresh frozen blueberries in the secondary. Whoa. So, gee, I wonder which one had the blueberries. Yeah. I, I never well, picked up on blueberry. I, I would have said crazy cranberry yeah. before i would have said uh blueberry yeah, but it makes sense cranberry yeah it's interesting they not both, blue at all <laughs> they both had blueberries in them no the the, the first one has uh blueberry, uh, blueberry four ounces of blueberry extract it, uh, yeah. this one? it, it did not add very much flavor at all four ounces didn't yeah I think the uh, extract, as far as it lost the acidity and actual character that a blueberry would give, I mean, because the first one seemed very sweet, and I could tell there was a fruit in it, but then the second one has that little bit of acidity, the tannins or whatever, that makes it more enjoyable, I think. 
And again, we're assuming that the one with the red coloring is the one with the real berries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could be completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it really, well, that's pretty dramatic. Um, mm -hmm. The difference between yeah. the two. Uh, I really didn't pick it up at all in the first beer. So yeah. I'd, I'd like to know what everybody's feeling is. Which one did you like better? I, I, I like number two a lot better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even though our description of me thinking it was drier or sweeter yeah, in your drawing, but you still dry. liked it better. I still yeah. preferred number two. I'll be on, I'll be honest. I bet part of our perception of the flavor and what we taste in it is because we thought it was going to be more fruity because of the color. I don't know, but it really, th I you know, I'd like to try this blind, blindfolded. Ooh. Oh, we could do that, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah you, you have a blindfold? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> you have a leather mask with no eye holes is what you have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay tuned. So, Adam, I, I guess you, you got a kick out of me because I, I emailed you uh, asking which one was which uh, before I opened them. And I guess you kind of chuckled when you told me which, <laughs> which yeah, I, I had my tongue, which. I had my tongue in my cheek when, when, uh, when you said that to me. And I said, fine, I'll, I'll label them one and two, but it, it's, it's not really going to make much of a difference because these, <laughs> these beers are night and day different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just looking at them, it was funny because when we poured them uh, at Andy's house, I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell which one is which, <laughs> but I didn't let on. I still didn't let on, uh, you know, uh, with with anything about the beers uh, when I first poured them. Now, what do you think? I, I think I think our tasters did a pretty good job of uh, of whittling down the mystery of these two two beers. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, if I don't know how well I would have done not knowing uh, which was what was added to these. But, uh, yeah, I thought their comments were, were funny listening to them because I knew, I knew exactly which was uh, which. Was which. <laughs> now, we have these beers in, in, front, of, in front of us now, and uh, I'm tasting them. Uh, uh, I didn't really participate in the tasting the other night, so uh, I've got two whole beers uh, to, to my own here. Uh, <laughs> so cheers, Adam, over cheers. Skype. Uh, the... the um, just a little sip here. Hmm. They're both tasty beers. They're both pretty carbonated. I don't know that that has anything to uh, anything to do with the experiment part, but um, well, they're wheat beers. They're supposed to have a little bit of head, but th these are excessively effervescent. <laughs> but the the um, I can see. Why they couldn't really pick out what was going with going on with number one with the extract, because I can I can taste you know some some fruitiness, but it's it's not an identifiable blueberry taste. No, the well again the the bottle says use one to four ounces depending on the kind of style you're going to make, and I would assume that you'd add maybe four ounces to a dark beer when you're trying to just to get a hint over the roasty grains. I was putting this in a wheat beer. I thought, whoa, if I put four ounces in there, it's going to just be in your face and over the top. And there's something that's over the top, but it's just like tartness. Maybe the <laughs> extract was made with like phosphoric or some sort of acid. <laughs> to, Sulfuric to acid. Well, no, it's something to get the artificial tartness uh, of fruit. It's eating through the bottom of my cup here. Uh, <laughs> it's probably like you know uh, a, a rough soda. It's it so actually you, could be it could be the same uh, flavoring that they use in in, uh, in sodas. So you th or or you know blueberry pies, you know the Hostess blueberry pies or whatever. Uh, so do you think do you think that you might have gotten a more authentic sort of uh, blueberry flavor if you didn't use as much extract? I don't think so. I mean, it, maybe it wouldn't be as tart, but as Andy was saying too, he he, he knew it was kind of fruity, and, and I think he picked up on the tartness. But I, I like to use that word, tart. Um, but I I don't know what, what what he was exactly picking up on. But none of us could pick out blueberry out 
even after I know it's in there, I, I can't even pick it up. Mm -hmm. It's a tasty beer. You know, I'd, I'd drink it, obviously. I, I... <laughs> but it's just not a – I wouldn't pick it out as being a blueberry wheat beer. I could give a shout out to my uh, my homebrew clubs, the uh, the CSP Brewers in Pella, Iowa, and the uh, Iowa Brewers Union or IBU in uh, Des Moines. And I, I remember bringing this to the IBU meeting and uh, having people taste it. And I, I think about fifty different people tried this beer, both sets of beers, and uh, hands down, everybody liked the ruled blueberry way better. I think maybe three people preferred the uh, the tart. Um, extract version. Now, did they know what they were getting into? Did they know what uh, what beers they were tasting and what ingredients? I didn't tell them which was which, but I did tell them that I did a, a blueberry experiment. <laughs> now, the um, it's interesting that uh, uh, Casey said that the the uh, the real blueberry beer had a um, uh, uh, sort of a cranberry flavor to it. Um. Well, she also said it was kind of. She thought it was dry, mm -hmm. and um, it. Uh, I think it's sweet right up front, and and then it goes to dry. And that 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 dryness is what I would maybe associate with like a cranberry. And the color the color could be very deceptive too because it. It's not blue by any means. It's it's kind of a kind of a light purple hue to it yeah i would agree might, might be confused with the maybe like a like a cranberry drink but it, yeah it's definitely <laughs> definitely two different looking beers um uh, yeah i'm just i was the flavor is actually starting to get a little more mellow I, I brewed these in the fall and uh the the real blueberry is actually starting to mellow out a little bit i remember when i tasted it fresh um you could taste the the wheat. You could taste the the blueberry, and it was like a uh, a blueberry pancake. Oh, All wow. I needed to do is add the maple syrup, and it would have been good to go. <laughs> now, now, did you uh, uh, did you do any pasteurization on this at all, or just straight from the uh, uh, straight from the freezer? Straight from the freezer. In fact, I pulled it out at the beginning of my brew day, thinking that they would. Uh, thaw out but uh, they they were pretty frozen solid so or beginning of my i did that very secondary so it was the beginning of the day and then i had some errands and chores and then when i i transferred them uh in early afternoon uh they were still frozen hmm. so but i figured the the beer would uh, eventually they would uh, thaw out and and the flavors would, would go in there if i had Again, I have eight pounds in there, which is almost twice the recommended amount that you're supposed to put in a fruit beer. I was, I was trying to go extreme on the extract and extreme on the fruit, but I, I don't think it got extreme as, as it could have. If I if I did it again, I'd probably maybe only do four or five pounds, but I would I would muddle them up. I hmm. would I would really I'd really mash up the skins good because I was just putting uh, whole blueberries in there. The color still got through great. So at the end, did you did the did the blueberry still appear whole? Uh, yeah, I actually I dumped it on the I dumped it on the refuge pile, and I I actually pulled one up, and I thought I, I got to try this, and I actually picked it up, gro as gross as it was, covered with <laughs> yeast, and I popped it in my mouth, and and it still had quite a bit of flavor, <laughs> and that's why I know that I I, I probably should have muddled them up because there was still I only got half the flavor out of that eight, so I, I got you know, maybe four pounds of flavor. So maybe if I, I took four or five pounds and I muddled them up, I would, I, I could get, perceive double the amount of flavor. So, so abuse your berries before you put them in the uh, secondary. Yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, what other advice can you, can you think of uh, <clears throat> to get from this experiment for those who want to, to brew a, a similar uh, fruit beer? Um. Actually, I, 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 you asked me what kind of fruit beers I did. I also did a strawberry beer. I remember that now. And I put that in the boil. That's probably the only beer that I, I actually put the fruit in the boil. And the aroma was just amazing, just pure strawberries that was coming out of the aroma. But uh, the flavor after it fermented 
it was still a very drinkable beer, but I, I just did not enjoy it. Huh. I, I didn't I didn't enjoy it as much as I, I thought I was going to. Do. It didn't smell as good as the the brew pot did. Uh, <laughs> and and I've mashed the watermelon and pumpkin in, in the mash ton. And I if uh, going all three ways, I, I would definitely say the best way to add fruit is in the secondary. Well, and most go. of the most of the literature tells you that too. So what's next on on the experiment list? Well, I still have a third of, of a bag of uh, wheat, and so ev- eventually I'd like to uh, do another comparison between a, a green tea and a black tea, and just add a bunch of maybe some bags of bags of tea, uh, and see what that the, the differences that come out of that. I don't expect them to taste anything alike, but maybe uh, if I ever want to brew another tea wheat beer again. I'll find out that black's bad and green's good, or vice versa. <laughs> well, if you, if you do it, let us know, and uh, we, you know we'll at least uh, we can at least pass your experiences on. Uh, you know, right. if for if for nothing else, during the email segment, how about that? Okay, <laughs> I'm not as thrilled about tea beer as I as I am about the fruit beer, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe it goes over really big in China. <laughs> well, you know. The the way we're going nowadays, uh, you might you might might be a good thing to learn how to brew for that uh, particular audience. <laughs> well, Adam, this has been fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I appreciate your uh, appreciate your your uh, sending the beers, and I appreciate your spending time. Thank you, James. Well, that was fun. Thanks again to Adam, and to uh, also to our tasters, Andy, Casey, and Jen for playing along. And by the way, we didn't get around to the blind tasting, as Andy suggested, uh, because I, I put the three of them back to work immediately, evaluating uh, my four samples from the BYO BBR collaborative experiment, which you will hear next week. By the way, I'll, I'll be posting a link to Adam's recipe in the description of this episode on basicbrewingradio.com, and it will be an episode extra on our iPhone and Android apps, too. So just hit that extra button up there, and you'll get to see the PDF with his recipe right there on your device. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Our new DVD is here, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing. And our 2011 Brewer's Logbooks are in stock as well. Don't start 2011 without a book. Check out our online store to find those. And you can also check out our other DVDs, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits as well. We've got combo deals to save you a few bucks at our store. And you can check out our shirts as well. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basicbrewing.com. And if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online in our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click on our Amazon.com link. We appreciate the support there. Featured products this week that were purchased through the link are Celestron 44302 Handheld Digital Microscope and Hemocytometer Cell Counting Chamber. I'll bet those two go together, but I don't know for sure. Because I, because I can't, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping, and we appreciate your support as usual. Don't forget that you can also join the American Homebrewers Association or subscribe to Read Your Own Magazine through an associate link on BasicBrewing.com. That's all until next week. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Dotson, Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long.